Okay, now for the tricky part, we're going to get the actual opening time statically, what we call statically set. In other words, we're not doing it with the engine running using a timing light, not at this point. But we got to be pretty darn close uh, before we can start this bike up once we put it back in the frame. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating that uh, advancer again. You can see that here's two and three showing up in the little window. I'm looking for one and four. Remember what I said, the marks where there's an F and a T. F is that firing mark I'm looking for. So now we're coming up close. Those two little spread lines, those are maximum advance. So when the engine running and I bring the RPMs up, I should see it with a strobe light come up there. But I'm interested in the F. Now, I'm going to keep it just short of the uh, mark at this point because here's the process. Let's see if I can back out and show that all to you. I'm going to be using an ohm meter here to let me know when those points have opened. So as right till I get to that F, I want to see that change uh, from closed, which is going to look like this, to open. So I'm going to be looking for that as I slowly bring that up to F. I'm going to access that by putting one of these meter leads on the ground and then one on the corresponding points wire. See the blue wire here and the blue wire here. So we're going to put that together. Whoop. Back to ground you go. Okay, and now right now I'm reading the resistance through the point. So again, as I, as I just them to open, it should just pop right there, okay, as I come up to the F mark. Now I have the F mark for the uh, cylinders one and four just prior to the index. We're gonna bring it over really slow, I mean really slow as we watch the gauge the meter looking for that change to happen just as I get to that line. If you have an analog meter, that's even better, or a continuity meter works well. Uh, if you can set up a test light, uh, either in the bike or off the bike, um, watch for the light to start to flicker. That's a good one. Let's see, we're starting to get some motion here. I'm just right on the F here. So I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. If I need to make a little adjustment, keep in mind which way this is going. I'm turning this way. That means the bump is has to come up this way, which means if I want to get that to open, I've got to turn that breaker plate that way. Um, again, the screws are just uh, snug. They're not too tight. So it's not going to take a whole lot to, to bounce this around. A um, couple ways we can do that. We can give a little coax here, here. We'll just give a little bump. Okay, and there's the change. Again, this is, I mean, you're talking a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Okay, so we're going to snug these down evenly, if possible, to keep anything from changing. You see the meters going both, both ways here. Again, that's good because we're looking at just when that contact separates. I mean, just separates. And now with everything snug down, we're going to go ahead and spin it around again. Looking through the window, the 1-4 marks. Bring it up just to the F. But now I'm going to watch the gauge more. And just barely moving it. Just barely moving, slowly, slowly, slowly. There, and we're starting to make a change there. A uh, little bit too far, so we're gonna work with that a little bit until we get it right where we want it. Okay, I've just moved the meter lead, the positive meter lead to the yellow wire, that's this one here, to the two, three. Uh, we wanna make sure that when it opens, we read it. Yeah, we do there. So that's fine. And then it's the same thing we did on the one, four. Just gonna rotate it very slowly as we get it to the F mark. As you watch that 
meter. Very quietly, okay, we're starting, starting to move. And getting close to the F here, we're just going to kind of bounce it. And you see it, the, the shift on the grayscale on the bottom, how that's bouncing around. Actually, this is a little head. So I'm going to bring it a little closer to the F. But this is going to need a little bit of adjustment. Now, it's coming on early, which means as we turn this way, the bump on the cylinder, uh, the, the mechanical advanced cylinder, is getting here too soon, which means we have to turn this part away from that to happen later, right? It's got its own little plate here, two screws holding it in place, and then a slot to adjust it here. So let's break those loose. <laughs> And we still want tension on them as we make this adjustment. And let's see, what do we lose there? Okay, got that back. Uh, again, double check. Opens and closes. So now we got to get this to turn to where it's going to just shut off. Move it very slightly. Okay, right about in there. Let us snub that down again. And one more time, all the way around to the mark. There's the two, three. Very slowly now. Coming up on the F, watching the meter, very slowly. All right, pretty good. Uh, we look pretty good there. So now we have the points are statically timed. It's close enough for us to get the engine running. And then once we have it running in the frame, we can go ahead and um, time it with a strobe light, the old Nation timing light to get it spot on, but uh, there we go. That's how you set the static timing and breaker points on the CB750. Okay, with the breaker plate cover installed to protect the points, uh, when we put it back in the frame, we're just about done with the engine. Uh, now we just need to get it back in the frame and wire everything back up and fire this thing up, see how it sounds. You know, working on your own stuff seems to be uh, uh, dying off. Uh, with the cars, of course, there's not a whole lot to do it yourself or can do. And even on, on the newer motorcycles, same way. But there is a whole lot that you can do. And if you're not doing it, I would kind of encourage you to go ahead and do that. First, it saves you some money. And uh, number two, it uh, helps you build that bond between you and your ride. You get to know it a lot more intimately than you would just by, you know, firing it up and mowing down off down the road. Maybe it's just me, maybe that sounds kind of silly, but uh, it makes a big difference when I get on the road and knowing that uh, my bike's in top shape and I know because I'm the one that made it that way. And you can too, with a little help from SBTV How To. We'll see you next time. Did you enjoy the video you just watched? Did you find it helpful? We sure hope so. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up and you add your comments to that section right below the player there. And don't forget to share our videos with your Harley riding friends. Once you got all that taken care of, if you want to make sure that you're the first to know about any new videos that we put up online, hit that subscribe button for us. Thanks for watching.